it's time to move away from Russia mm -hmm. and get into something that I'm a little bit more uh, comfortable. Yeah, let's go to a real <laughs> dystopian society. Yeah, something a little bit more I'm more comfortable speaking about. Well, not comfortable in the classic sense, but uh, have a bit more knowledge on and can put my opinion forward a bit more strongly, mm -hmm. I would say, which is that Scotland is looking to simplify gender change, and that's self-ID gender identity. Uh, that they're talking about, so whether you consider yourself a man or a woman, uh, and whether people legally have to uphold those feelings that you have about yourself, mm -hmm. is going to be much simpler. So they've uh, revealed a controversial new plan, and they've published uh, controversial plans to simplify the process of changing gender identity. Mm -hmm. The Holyrood Bill contains proposals, uh, I don't know, is Holyrood, is that uh, uh, the Scottish region, Parliament building. Uh, the Scottish Parliament building, okay. So they've named this bill after, the, <laughs> after their building. Contains proposals to make it easier and quicker for people to change their legally recognised gender and to reduce the minimum age for change from, from 18 to 16, which is fantastic because I know that at 16 years old I was uh, absolutely certain about every decision that I made. Certainly to do with alcohol certainly to do with alcohol, and uh, would really love to still be dealing with the consequences of every big decision I made at the age of 16, which uh, f physically, of course, because obviously you, the, the counter argument that people can provide mm -hmm. to this is that, oh, people are expected to know what career they want to take at the age of 16 mm -hmm. and therefore have to plan their educational moves from that point onwards. But uh, you can change courses. Yes. You can change your direction of your life mm -hmm. that you want to go on a career or educational basis. You cannot reverse the effects of years of hormonal treatment, and you certainly cannot grow back a penis. Supporters of the changes have welcomed the move as very important, but opponents have labelled it appallingly regressive. <gasps> Currently, trans people need to apply to a UK gender recognition panel to obtain a gender recognition certificate. <laughs> That sounds just so silly to oh, me. No, you I got know. a license for that gender there, sir? <laughs> <laughs> or madam? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which, oh, but yeah, but it, it basically allows them to change their birth certificate and applicants must have lived in their acquired gender for at least two years and have a formal diagnosis of gender dysphoria, mm -hmm. the discomfort felt by someone as a result of the difference between their biological sex and what they regard as their gender identity. And this is why when when people say that transgender people are mentally ill, according to this definition, it's a statement of I'm fact. By, on, a per, uh, on a perfectly legal and medical basis, mm -hmm. it is absolutely true. And in fact, uh, the formal diagnosis of gender dysphoria, the fact that it is a mental illness, which is, I believe, uh, included in professional textbooks mm -hmm. and big books of uh, mental illnesses mm -hmm. in America and the UK. Oh, sorry. Oh yeah, plot twist from John. It's a lie. There is no gender on birth certificate, only sex. Well, that doesn't matter in our new postmodern world, John. Sorry to break it to you. Uh, but yeah, that's the only reason that, it, the, that it's classified as a mental illness, that they get it covered on insurance. Right. That they yeah. can, in America, and also in, in the UK, because of course the NHS is national insurance for everybody, but you still have to pay if you want cosmetic surgery. Mm. You certainly can't, well, I'm sure there are probably examples that you can throw at me, but you you shouldn't be able to, for instance, get breast implants on my tax money. Um, so if it, all of a sudden it's not a disorder anymore, you shouldn't be able to get a cosmetic sex change or gender change on my taxpayer money either. The gender recognition reform bill would remove the need for such a diagnosis to allow people to make their application after three months of living their acquired gender. Three months. Three months and no diagnosis. And to be honest, a lot of the doctors that you speak to regarding this, from what I've read, are not great. They're not exactly thorough in the way that they... Uh, they just uh, officially subverted sex on all official documents by calling it gender, whilst changing sex on documents. Yeah, John's got a good point here, which is that the, the, the differences between the terms gender and sex and the sort of moulding of the two is a su subtle form yeah. of linguistic subversion. Yeah, that's a, that's a quick summary of that. Gender was basically invented by a sexologist called John Money. Check out one of my old videos on yeah. the left's problem with paedophilia. Absolutely horrible, reprehensible guy we should not be using that word or his his pseudoscience to describe these issues um, whereas biological sex is what has always been used and it's reliable and sensible yes but to get back to the the thing it's so it's not about 
It's not just the social stuff that's regarding the gender identity. It's also the surgical stuff as well. The fact that after only three months with no medical diagnosis, just if you just dress up in a dress mm. for three months, you get access to the hormone treatments and the surgeries once you've been through the hormone treatments is a pretty serious change that will affect a lot of people and it needs a high barrier of entry mm -hmm. for the people who will inevitably detransition. And this is especially important when we're talking about people who are not even 18 years old yeah, yet. And it's worth having a conversation here about whether it's best to have a false positive or a false negative in this. And I would argue overwhelmingly that, um, well, depending on how you define that, it is far better to have fewer people transitioning and fewer people experiencing trans regret than it mm. is to have more people transitioning, transitioning and fewer people are supposedly regretting not transitioning sooner. Yes, because the regret after you've already gone through the surgery is not just like if you or I were to think back to a time when we were 16, made a stupid decision when you're out drinking and go, oh, that's a bit embarrassing. This is something that carries long term, in fact, lifelong yeah. side effects and issues going forward for for forever until you're mm -hmm. dead. And this is the thing, right? If If it took longer, if you couldn't make the decision until you came of age, you could still make the decision later in life. Okay, you could argue that the hormone therapy wouldn't have as much of an effect, but that's all you're losing if you ultimately mm. do choose to transition. But think of what you're losing if you fully transition at the age of, from the age of 16 and then choose to detransition, right? You are now sterilized, right? You have, you have completely screwed up your biology. Mm -hmm. And you cannot undo that decision. It's incredible. It's something that you can't walk back. Yeah, certainly. So their new application will be submitted to the Registrar of Scotland, following which they would undertake a three-month period of reflection. Reflection, that's it. Reflection before a certificate is issued. They would be required to take an oath stating that they will live in their acquired gender permanently, and any false declaration would be considered a criminal offence. And I find this so stupid mm -hmm. because... So basically, they just have to make a promise. Mm -hmm. I swear that I won't go back on this. But how is that promise falsifiable? If they detransition later, would they be held legally accountable for lying? How would you prove that they were lying or they, they just didn't know what they, uh, the decision they were making at the time, mm -hmm. especially a 16-year-old? And if you don't hold them accountable, would you hold somebody else accountable for pushing them into that lifestyle choice or tricking them or convincing them into thinking that they had these problems. So this whole thing is just a complete legal fog where you've no idea what any of it, how any of it will go moving forward. It's all very subjective. And when you're talking about laws, you kind of need some objective criteria for them to be able to be applied in situations like this. Scotland's social justice secretary, because of course Scotland has a social justice secretary, mm -hmm. Shona Robinson said, trans men and women are among the most stigmatized in our society, and many find the current system for obtaining gender recognition certificate to be intrusive, medicalized, and bureaucratic. Many and things are intrusive, medicalized, and bureaucratic these days. This is one of the few places where I would absolutely defend those claims and say, good. Yeah. That's where it should be. You need it to be medicalized because the end result of transitioning is surgery massive, mm -hmm. major, life-changing surgery. Mm -hmm. And the bureaucracy, as I've said, needs to be there so that people have enough time to think it through properly because mm -hmm. you need a high barrier to entry for this sort of stuff. Yeah. And I just hate the way, and this Scotland having a particularly low quality of, edu of education in its politicians is notorious for this. But the, oh, their, really? <laughs> their statements are just incredibly cookie cutter. Completely oh, un unimaginative. Like I don't think trans men and women are among the most stigmatized in our society. You could probably find that in Google engrams, and f t once you type that in, you'll find that the incidence of that set phrase will just go since 2018. Yes, and I would say I would like to see the figures on that, and I would like to see it, whether it's qualitative or quantitative data that you're doing. Yeah, because a, just just it asking matter, somebody, Harry, it's a religious statement oh, I'm, of belief. I'm sorry, I just expect people to back up certain claims with evidence. <laughs> no, um, so that's, that's this is wrong of me, I suppose. No, this is I'll a statement of belief, and then they're saying based on our ideological belief, therefore. All right, I'll start burning books as we speak. Then right. Helen Joyce, Abigail Schreier, in the fire with you. <laughs> there you go. This bill does not introduce any new rights for trans people. 
It's about simplifying and improving the process for a trans person to gain legal recognition, which has been a right for 18 years. But mm -hmm. it, it's not adding rights, yep. but it is removing important barriers that are necessary. Yep. Welcoming the introduction of the new bill, the Scottish Trans Equality Network, LGBT Youth Scotland and Stonewall Scotland and the LGBT Health and Wellbeing said in a joint statement, because of course there are like 50 different organisations, they all think the same thing, mm -hmm. it's just differences in time titles. These are very important reforms. The current requirements stigmatize trans people by linking legal recognition of who they are to a psychiatric report and deny them their right to privacy over personal choices they have made about medical treatments. Well, if it's being paid for with taxpayer money, mm -hmm. it's not as private a decision anymore, no. is it? And. Uh, and because they cannot currently apply until two years after they have been permanently living in their transition sex, trans people are currently at risk of discrimination or harassment whenever they need to use their birth certificate to prove their identity. And I swear that this situation that they are describing does not happen as often as they say it does and is never as traumatic as people are saying I it have is. an example oh, okay. where it does happen very recently and it is much more traumatic than most people claim, which is transgender Ukrainian citizens trying to leave the country. Ah, yes. Because uh, men are not allowed, biological males are not allowed to leave the country. They have to pick up a gun and fight. All of a sudden, when you find when it comes to life or death, mm -hmm. all of the ideology, all of the religious further gets dropped. Mm -hmm. And it's like, sorry, you've got the muscles of a man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, also right, birth certificate okay, yeah. doesn't have your current photo on it, so it's not ID. Just as I was saying, John yeah. has proven me right, nobody's having to pre present a birth certificate. It happens occasionally. Well, not, it, not but... very often, and certainly nowhere near as often as yeah. these ideologues would have you believe. Mm -hmm. And of course, what has this led to? It's led to uh, people predicting a surge in gender change surgery, which definitely will not have any ramifications or bad effects 10 years or 15 not years the down the line. that photo there, it implies that Nicola Sturgeon hands a Yusuf in front of the queue. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't be shocked. Uh, there, there, there could be a tenfold increase in the number of people applying to change their gender in Scotland mm -hmm. after controversial legislation abolished the need for medical diagnosis. Um, they mentioned Shona Robinson again. She admitted the number of applications for gender recognition certificate in Scotland was expected to surge from around thirty to between two hundred and fifty and three hundred per year. So these. Individually are not huge numbers, but if you were looking at them proportionally, that's a massive increase, an almost 1,000% increase wow. in people, and who knows how that will go for uh, go further. But feminist campaign group Fair Play for Women claimed there could actually be a hundredfold rise under the legislation's plans to make Scotland the first part of the UK to allow people to self-identify their legal gender. Amid concerns that predatory men could exploit the new laws, to access female-only areas, the group warned the bill allows birth sex to be hidden. Ms. Robinson insisted that a tenfold increase was a small number in the context of the Scottish population and insisted the bill has no direct effect on single-sex spaces such as women's toilets and changing rooms. Now, I've mentioned already that when you're putting your personal medical decisions on the taxpayer's front, it's no longer as private uh, a decision as it could have been made, but this is where I'm going to take the opposite response, the, the opposite stance in uh, responding to this, because when you're talking about the people in context of the population, mm. yeah, it's not very many, but when you're talking about the lives of individual people, because that's who these people are, they are individual people, it's, they're no longer a statistic, and these effects will have massive ramifications for their lives going forward. So it's a very nuanced and complex issue that they're trying to just turn into slogans. Yeah. She urged people not to conflate the issue of violence against women with transgender rights. An accompanying fact sheet issued by the Scottish government argued trans people can and have been using facilities that match their gender for years, and they will continue to do so. And that's not been controversial at all, mm -hmm. has it, Scotland? There's been no issues with that, nothing in Loudoun County, nothing like Fallon Fox beating the ever-loving crap out of biologically female UFC fighters, for instance. The plans have triggered the fiercest internal opposition within the SNP that Ms Sturgeon has faced since becoming the First Minister more than seven years ago, with around 10 MSBs wanting a free vote. Mm -hmm. Kate Forbes, the Finance Secretary, is understood to be among those who have deep misgivings. However, Ms Sturgeon's spokesman said that those in the Cabinet are bound by collective responsibility. 
Exactly. What, no responsibility. Yeah, exactly what I would expect a socialist to say. And to bring uh, this this point on about detransitioning and other such things, um, you might want to be interested in checking out Blair White, who is a trans woman who talks a lot about these issues because they are very important. She's probably the only trans YouTuber that I'm aware of that puts a spotlight on these things. And if you just scroll down, you can see the title of this, Detransitions of TikTok, the other side of the coin, because even on a platform like TikTok, people detransitioning is suddenly becoming more prevalent. They're mm -hmm. becoming more forward-facing yeah. as more and more people come out as having detransitioned. And if you want to check the video, go for it. But just be, be aware that some of the stuff that they talk about in there is not nice because these stories of people who were pushed into this or mm -hmm. sort of got caught up in the social contagion mm -hmm. of this, basically, I think the term is trans-trender. Yeah. Uh, they really, really regret their decisions. I'll just, I'll just put it like that. And they are not getting any support from the people no. who supposedly were there to support them in the first place. Well, this is the thing. There's a kind of a, a cameraman's fallacy going on here where all of the, that the mainstream will show you is, oh, look at this person. She transitioned. Now she's so happy and that sort of thing. Oh, this person, he transitioned. Now he's so happy and all of that. So you think, oh, wow, isn't that a great thing? And then the other side of the aisle, you see these people who are the the false positives, the people who transitioned and are now trying to detransition, and their lives have been irrevocably damaged by the whole process. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's actually, in a sense, creating two camps on this issue, because one side hears only the trans joy is real side, and the other side is like, sees the trans regret side of it. And uh, and they actually live in alternate realities simply because of where the camera is pointed on yeah. this issue. I would say I'm sure there are examples, people like Blair White, who transition responsibly mm. and then make it very well known all of the difficulties and issues that come with transitioning. She has said plenty of times that if she had been given a choice between transition or take this pill that makes your gender dysphoria go away, she's like, well, I obviously would have taken the pill yeah. because it wouldn't have required you know, all of this effort to go through with it. Yeah. But we don't have that pill currently. Mm. And sadly, because of the trans activists, not the trans trans people, the trans activists, any sort of inroads when it comes to looking into other potential ways of treating people with this dysphoria are being blocked and mm -hmm. stigmatized as evil, as transphobic and other such buzzwords. Mm -hmm. And um, somebody, somebody put a big thread about this on Twitter, Malcolm Clark, who I believe is a journalist, talking about, well, if you're going to remove any and all qualifier other than you live as the other gender for three months, you're going to end up having to legally recognize people like this person. I will not gender them in any sense, just in case I get in trouble with YouTube, but a six foot two mechanic who identifies as a six year old girl. Now, as an individual, this person has every right to consider themselves a six year old girl, but do we want legal services to recognize this person legally as a six-year-old girl i i wouldn't say so i think we i don't need think to... he does have the right to view himself as a six-year-old girl to be honest i think he has responsibilities as an adult six volt two mechanic that he needs to live up to but that's my uh, my that, that bigoted opinion that is a very bigoted and disgusting <laughs> opinion you've got there john you should be ashamed of yourself you make sure to give 20 Hail Marys after this is done. <laughs> um, and just as another reminder as well, uh, here's another update that the NHS is going to start giving out cervical screenings for trans men and non-binary people who have cervixes. So just another reminder that no matter what the prevailing vision is, no matter what your ideology is, biology and concrete reality will always win out. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast The Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as our interview with Andy No, this one being Tea Time with Andy No between Carl and Andy, of course. And if you want to follow Andy, you can always follow him on Getter at, at Mr. Andy No. Thank you and goodbye.